Hey everyone, I see we have a couple people in the room. Where are you guys located? Drop it in the chat. Awesome, we're just gonna give it a couple more minutes while people pick what rooms they wanna go into. Hang tight. Hey everyone, we're just hanging tight to let everyone kind of hop into the rooms that they want to join for the first breakout session. Thanks for coming, 20 people. Welcome. Start thinking about questions you might have about UX Academy, switching into design, working in product design or UX design in general. I see a question. I can answer some questions while we're waiting. Why not? What's the best part of being a product designer for me? Oh, I see Alexa hopped in. I'll finish this question. I love prob problem solving, and that's pretty much what product design is, is solving problems. Hello, hello. Hey, Alexa. Hey, Hannah, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? It looks like we have 55 people. That's pretty cool. Amazing, hello, 55, 56, 57 people. <laughs> this is so great. Okay, yeah, I heard people were already starting to ask you questions, that's so awesome. If you have questions for Hannah, you can definitely pop them in the session chat room. Um, we'll definitely leave time for like Q&A at the end. Um, and if we see stuff throughout the conversation that we want to answer, we can do that too. Um, but I figure we could go ahead and just get started if that's cool with you, Hannah. Awesome. Sounds good. Okay. So let's start at the beginning of your education and career. Now, I know you attended the University of Arkansas and you studied both marketing and economics. So what were your first few marketing jobs out of college like? And why, uh, what did studying and working in marketing teach you that you can apply now to your UX positions? Kind of a secondary question. Yeah. So after I graduated with my undergrad, I had a couple jobs. One job was in marketing and one job was more focused around account management, like customer support um, for a startup. So um, they were good overall, but I noticed that I was um, craving some problem solving and I wasn't really like looking forward to getting better at my job. And I thought this is going to be a problem long term if I'm not feeling really energized about moving up in my career and promoting. Um, so overall, they were good, but it didn't take long for me to realize that this re really wasn't where I should be long term. Um, and what have I learned? What did I learn in marketing roles or maybe like business school that helped me in design? Well, when you're a product designer or a UX designer, you're constantly working with business people in your company. So at Aptable, I'm working with, it's a startup, so I'm working with my CEO and my CTO and my COO and um, my product team who are focused on driving the business forward. Um, so everything I design, I have to be able to translate that into why it's important for the business and how it's going to help the business. Um, and that's a very 
specific skill that you need to learn. I think that that I can leverage my marketing experience there, but I, I definitely still have a ways to go for um, communicating business value from my designs. Yeah, absolutely. It seems like there are a lot of transferable skills from marketing to UX design. I'm a marketer right now and I'm learning UX design. So I, I definitely feel that way. But what was it that made you decide to switch to a career in UX design? Yeah, it was really, I mean, first of all, I was noticing that I wasn't satisfied doing marketing um, in my in my first two roles. And so that kind of led me to start looking into what else I might could do. And my aunt actually is a design lab mentor. Um, her name is Julie. Um, she's been a design lab mentor for a couple of years now. And I was talking to her on the phone and I was like, you know, I haven't done any branding or any website design or, you know, why am I not doing any of that? I thought that was marketing. And she was like, no, that's what I do for a living. And it's called product design or UX design or UX UI design. And so then she was like, here's some podcasts to listen to, here's some articles to read. I started doing some research and then I took um, Design 101 with Design Lab just to kind of like dip my toes in a little bit. And then from there, I realized that, you know, product design is really about problem solving. And I, I felt a little bit stagnant in my marketing roles where I wasn't solving new problems all the time. Um, so that's what led me into the career switch. I love that. Yes, problem solving is definitely a key theme that we see that a lot of our students really have that they love. Um, and I love that you took Design 101 first. That's definitely what we recommend to students who are, you know, switching from an entirely different career, don't have a design background. So Design 101 or our new foundations course can definitely mm -hmm. teach people everything they need to know before they go into UX Academy. But uh, speaking of UX Academy, what was your experience in UX Academy like? And maybe you can tell me like what the most helpful part of the curriculum was or what your favorite part of the experience was. Yeah, it was a great experience overall. I started out doing it full time um, when I moved to Miami and I wasn't working full time. And then once I um, I was like working a marketing job just to pay the bills and I switched to part time. And so that was a really nice transition um, and and it kind of helped me balance other things in life. Um, overall, I mean, it was rigorous. It was it was work. But the best thing about it that also compensates for the like the workload is that most of what you're doing in the course is project based and um, you're learning by doing. So if you think about traditional education where you're reading textbooks and then you're taking tests, that's not even close to what Design Lab was, which was refreshing. So the content was broken up between, you know, some articles to read, some interactive articles, some videos to watch. Um, to learn the content, but most of the learning was done by having meetings with your mentor and doing projects. Like you mentioned earlier in the meeting, um, you know, you finish about 100 hands-on projects by the end of UX Academy. I mean, you come out with a full-fledged portfolio by the end of it. So yeah, that was my favorite part along with the mentorship program. My mentor, Paul, was awesome and was definitely a contributor to my success through UX Academy. I love to hear that. Yeah, mentorship is often a really key aspect that people say was super helpful for them. Uh, and clearly your portfolio turned out awesome or you did something right in UX Academy because your first position after graduating was as a product designer at Royal Caribbean Cruises, which I think is so singing cool. So tell me about that. Were there any exciting projects you worked on there that you can tell us about or what was that experience like? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, it was my first design job and it was one of the best companies that you can work for in the Miami area. And I was really excited to join the team and it fell nothing short of my expectations. It was an incredible team. We started with about, when I started, I think we had about 25 people. Eventually we grew to like 35 people over the year that I was there. We had a very close knit design team and that's what I needed coming out of UX Academy. I wanted a team that I could lean on a team that could support me a team that i could learn from and it was full of just really amazing managers and team members in general we got really really close um and yeah we were shipping some cool stuff we were building applications for um, employees on cruise ships we were building applications for 
um, guests on cruise ships with features like, you know, ordering a drink from the bar from your phone or booking an excursion when your um, cruise ship docks next. Um, so it was really, they were really fun features. Um, and yeah, it was a great, it was a great year at Royal Caribbean. It was definitely, um, I got very lucky having that job um, coming out of, coming out of school. Yeah, it sounds amazing. I'm sure everyone is dying to know. Did you get any free cruises? <laughs> no, when when we go when we go on cruises, we were doing user testing. So it was cool, but you're still working, which is yeah. That's a fun setting though. So Definitely. um yeah. So you ultimately left Royal Caribbean and now you're working at Aptable in Denver. So tell me about that transition and how things at Aptable are going. Yeah, it's going well. I, I didn't choose to leave Royal Caribbean. Of course, COVID hit the cruise industry really hard and lots of people were laid off. It was a really shocking and also sad ending to my time at Royal because we were so close on that team. We all still keep in touch. A lot of them, a lot of my design um, colleagues from Royal are working at other companies together like Lowe's right now. Um, which is awesome. And we're still very close and rely on each other and work on freelance projects together and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, after the layoff, um, I went into the job hunt and if anyone's on the job hunt, I feel you. Um, it's, it's hard, keep going. But um, I got back in touch with the VP of design at Aptable who I had started the interview process with while I was at Royal and then kind of paused because I was enjoying my time there. And I got back in touch with him and we just picked up where we left off. And now I've been at Aptable for going on four months and it's extremely challenging and it's really fun. It's a fully remote company. Even before the pandemic, they've always been a distributed company from, from the beginning. Um, so that's awesome. They kind of, you know, have the structure and culture in place to run a really, really well oiled remote team. Um, and yeah, Every project that we work on is Aptable, at Aptable is exciting, in my opinion, because we are an early stage startup. They raised a Series A round of funding in 2019, and now we're pushing towards a Series B. So everything we do is, you know, is the goal is that, is growing the team. Um, so everything we do is fun and important because we're such an early, early stage startup. I love to hear that. I'm so glad things are going well at Optimal. Huge bummer about how things ended at Royal Caribbean. Maybe one day you'll get back in the cruise industry, but yeah. I'm sure, you know, probably a lot of people here even have experienced layoffs throughout this year or furloughs. So totally can empathize with that. But, um, you know, now that you've been in the UX workforce for a couple years, I think, um, what advice would you give to incoming, current, or graduating UX Academy students? Let's see. For incoming UX um, Academy students, I think my advice is time management. So breaking it up and making it ma making it um, manageable pieces. Sometimes I would catch myself like I'd be really motivated and I would work on on UX Academy for like 12 hours straight and then I would be like burnt out for two days. So if I have any advice for people who are about to start UX Academy, it's really make sure that you're you're breaking it up into digestible sections so that you don't burn out and you can um, stay strong throughout the whole course for grad or oh current UX UX Academy students. I would similarly say just push through, like it's really rewarding when you get to career services and you start putting your portfolio together and start applying for jobs and you kind of get to use the skills that you learn to, um, for the job hunt. So current UX Academy students just push through, like keep up the hard work. It's gonna be like, you're gonna have a lot of pride when you finish it. Um, and graduating UXE students, um, I would advise you to get any design experience you can on your resume, whether that's part-time gigs, freelance gigs, collaborating with um, other designers, um, going to conferences like this and getting your name out there. Um, that's gonna eventually lead you to get the role that you're really looking for. Um, so you have the education and you have the skills. My advice is just, you know, be scrappy and get as much um, experience as you can on your resume so that it can lead to you getting that like dream role for yourself. Those are great pieces of advice. Thanks for sharing those. Um, 
So, you know, you mentioned you're working remotely right now. Your company is 100% remote and they always have been. So that's great. Um, what has the current pandemic been like for you otherwise? What, what have you been up to? How have things been going? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely tough with the layoff, but now I'm working for a company who prioritizes working remotely, which I'm very blessed to be a part of a team that does that. Um, and we didn't really have to do that transition that a lot of companies had to do. So we're, we're grateful for that. Um, I spend a lot of time outside. I live in Denver, so I spend the weekends in the mountains as much as I can or in the garden in the backyard. Um, I try to have my hobbies actually, some of my hobbies might align with my role as a product designer, but most of my hobbies are completely outside of design. Um, it gives me a break from the screen. It gives me a break from my office. And it, um, you know, it gets me outside and gets me active. I love that. Denver is such a great area. Love visiting there. Um, so do you have any professional goals for 2020 that you'd like to share? I know we're kind of uh, coming towards the end of the year, but even looking beyond that, I know I'm certainly already making plans for 2021. Like, where do you see your career going or what's the next step? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Right now I'm really focusing on just being the best product designer that I can be. So that means laser focusing in on improving my, my tactical skill set and also my soft skill set. Um, that's what I'm focusing on for the next probably two quarters. So essentially going from product designer to senior product designer or lead product designer um, and being able to kind of lead other designers who are in my position right now. That's kind of what I'm laser focused on is just improving my skill set and being the best designer and the best communicator that I can be. That's awesome. Those are great aspirations. And I know you're already helping so many people just with this session right now. I'm sure people are learning a lot, but I'd love for us to maybe pivot our attention over to the questions in the chat since I see people are super active over there. So um, I can ask them to you if that's okay. Sure, go for it. Okay, so from Yvonne, I wanna say Yvonne Bezalar um, is asking, what's been the best part of being a product designer for you? Yeah, I touched on this a little bit at the beginning of the call. Um, for me, it's, problem solving, but also the intersection of problem solving with technology. So um, that's what I was missing in my marketing degree. And, you know, every sprint, which is like a block of time at Aptable, we usually do two or three week blocks. I get a new problem to solve and I work with engineers and product managers and, you know, business analysts and our other people in the company to solve one big problem every couple of weeks. Um, so the problems are never the same. They're always challenging. Um, and that's what I love about my role right now. That's great, thank you. So next question from Ruping Ma. How did you prepare your portfolio after graduating from Design Lab? Yeah, that's a good question. So after you finish um, UX Academy, you move into a phase called career services where you're paired with another mentor um, who is focused on helping you get your portfolio ready, your resume ready, and apply for jobs and prepare for interviews. So for my portfolio specifically, I really wanted to make my case studies um, as concise as possible and scannable as possible. And that's really what I focused on. So each project, once you click into the project, um, a hiring manager would easily be able to scan and see what steps I took in the, in the process making that writing concise, I think is really important, which your career coach and your mentor, um, I think can help you do. Um, but yeah, really making the storytelling really concise was what I focused on for my portfolio. Yeah, that is really great advice. Um, we actually have a blog post on the Design Lab blog about how to use storytelling in your portfolio. So if anyone is interested, check that out. Um, okay, and our next question, and also you can feel free to tell me if you don't have a response to something, but you know, curious what you think about this. Um, from jo Jocelyn Vivar, do you think now is a good time to make a career change to UX? That's a good question. Um, I think right now is a good time definitely to learn new skills. Like if we're, you know, we're limiting, we're limited as to what we can do in a pandemic and I'm 
I think it's a great opportunity to start learning new skills. In terms of actually making the switch, I think that depends on a lot of very specific variables like your financial situation or um, if you like your job or if you don't like your job. But I think focusing on learning new skills right now would be a huge benefit. You know, once we come out of this, did you come out of, out of it with a new skill? Um, I think this is a great opportunity to, to take advantage of that time. I totally agree. That was my professional goal for 2020, like before this pandemic even happened, was this was going to be an upscaling year. And luckily, I've had the time to do that because I haven't been able to do anything else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sure everybody can relate. But uh, next question comes from Kara Goldberg. And she asks, what does your day to day look like in your current job? That's a good question. I'll just open up my calendar. <laughs> what my day looks like today. Um, it usually starts off with when I'm drinking my coffee, I'm looking at Slack messages. If you haven't used Slack, it's pretty much like a direct messaging system. I'm looking at Slack messages, I'm setting up meetings that maybe I need to have for the next couple days. From there, um, I usually have a decent block of time where I can get design work done. So today, design work meant doing user flows, doing task flows. Um, I use Miro for that tool uh, or as a tool to do task flows at Aptable. Um, and that means pretty much walking through the user journey without worrying about any visual or UI design. Um, from there, I usually have a few meetings. Sometimes I'll have like a one-on-one -on -one with my manager to talk about professional growth. But a lot of times the meetings are with my engineering team and my product manager. Um, and I did see someone's question about the difference between a product manager and a product designer. So I could just go ahead and jump into that here. A product manager is in charge of managing um, a certain feature set in a, pro in a digital product. They're not doing any designing, but they, they work very closely with product designers. Um, so product designers are managing the time and the efforts of engineers and designers for a specific initiative. Um, product designers are really following the lead of that initiative that the product manager has set and they're designing what um, the user sees and how the user works through certain user flows in the product. So I hope that answers your question um, about the difference between a PM and a PD. Um, after I have meetings with um, my engineers and my product managers and my manager, they usually have given me feedback on the design work that I've done. So today they gave me feedback on the flows that I completed this morning. And so after this, I'm gonna go um, look at that feedback and make changes to the design work that I did. On another day, the design work might not be user flows, it might be actual interaction design, adding buttons, adding drop downs, you know, writing UX copy. Thanks for that. That's great insight. Um, let's see. Next question here. Just lost my place. Okay. So Ron Lack asks, how did you feel during your first interview after graduating from UX Academy? Hmm, I don't even remember what actually my first interview was. Um, I was nervous, but um, you, hopefully this won't happen to you guys, but you end up, you know, eventually going through a lot of interviews and you get good at interviewing. And then, you know, when you have to start interviewing again, cause you, you know, lost your job or something, um, you get, you're kind of rusty and then you get good again um, because you're practicing a lot. So yeah, it was nerve wracking, but the career coach at Design Lab, you know, tells you pretty much, here's likely what will happen. Um, here's the questions that you should ask before the interview so you know what to expect. Here's the questions you, you might want to ask during the interview. Here's questions you should be prepared an to answer. Um, so yeah, it's nerve wracking. Over time, you get really good at interviewing unless you get lucky and, um, you know, get a job right off the bat, which hopefully is the case. Yes, hopefully. Um, another question from Cara Goldberg that I really liked. What worked well for you in developing your relationship with your mentor during UX Academy? That's a good question. Um, my mentor, actually, Courtney Leonard, who is another person talking right now. She was my mentor for Design 101, which is funny, and I just realized that today. Um, but Paul um, Kim was my mentor for UX Academy, and he's amazing. He's located in Austin. 
Um, and developing a relationship with them is really just about communication. Like, um, what time, you know, are you most productive to have feedback conversations? How do you like feedback given to you? You might not know these things when you start, but you're going to start learning when you have one group critique a week and one mentor session a week. You're going to start learning how you like to receive and how you like to give feedback and critiques. So as you learn those things, because they're likely going to be new to you, you have to start communicating those to your mentor. And I think that's the main key is you're going to start learning things about yourself and how you work. And your mentor is going to be willing to, you know, shift things around and do things differently if you're um, proactive about communicating those preferences to them. Yes, that is awesome advice. Thank you. So let's see, we have two minutes left. Were there any questions in there that you were itching to answer? Um, Kara asked, how many designers are you currently working with? Are you starting to focus on a specific area or are you working more with generalists? That's a good question. So at Royal Caribbean, we had a design team of like almost 40 people by the time um, I left. And in that role, we also had like 20 products. So we were mostly generalists there, but we, um, we did kind of specify a little bit. So I was working more on um, UI interaction and visual design, and I worked with my partner, Oscar, who worked on research and UX design. But now I'm at a startup where there's, um, let's see, four designers and a VP of design. And you know, at startups, you wear many hats. And so we are very much generalist designers at Aptable. Um, so depending on how the, the structure is at your company, you could need to be generalist, you could specify. A lot of times at startups, you do have to wear many hats though. That's good insight, thank you. And I have one good question to end us on, and this is from Kelly. Uh, I won't even attempt to pronounce her last name. Um, what are some things you wish you knew before going into the field? That's a good question. Um, I think one thing that is hard to replicate in a boot camp or in school is that you're not, you're likely not going to be working on things on your own unless you're a freelance designer and you're working solo. If you're on a team, um, you don't get to make all the decisions and have all the say about how the design's going to end up. I think that was a little bit shocking for me. You have business restrictions, budget restrictions, engineering and technology restrictions that you have to keep in mind. And the second one was that a lot of times when you join a team, there's a design system that's developed. So you might not be like, you're probably not going to be, you know, choosing the color palette and the branding and stuff like that. Unless again, you're a solo designer working for a brand new startup or something. I think that was a little bit shocking to me too, is that you're probably, you're likely going to come into a company and they're going to have an established, you know, some sort of established process that you will be able to influence. Um, but you're not starting from scratch every project, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. That's, that's great advice. Well, awesome. Hannah, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk with me today and to answer everybody's questions. This was really great. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks. And everybody can head over to the networking session now if they want to do some one-on-one -on -one speed networking. We'll see everybody over there. See ya. Bye, Hannah. <laughs>